welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to shine some love on a new model by Fender that really hasn't been talked about much. I don't know if people just aren't interested, they don't care, or is it they just don't know. So let's find out if the new Boxer series is actually any good or not. So when I ordered these, I just thought, you know, kind of a super strat light guitar. I did not even realize that this was a reissue of an 80s model. So in the mid 80s, I think it's like uh, about 84 till around 87 or so, you can find these Boxer series guitars in a whole bunch of varying different formats. Like there's the Stratocaster shapes that some of them have pick guards, some of them don't. Some of them just have a single humbucker in the bridge. Other ones are an HSS setup. Some of them are HH. I honestly don't know too much about them, so I can't say anything. But when they decided to reissue these, you know, last year they did the Strat and everybody was losing their minds. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, they reissued them. We're so happy. I think they were kind of hoping for that again with these and just not quite as much of a fandom on these, I guess. But let's go ahead and open this up before we start talking a little bit more about their new iteration. Ooh, that's looking slick. That's something that really drew my attention to this series is that black headstock. Perhaps I like that because, you know, most Gibson guitars have that and that's what I'm mainly known for reviewing and whatnot. But this is just such a sleek looking Stratocaster. So these things are made in Japan and they're offering them in two different body styles. You get the Stratocaster if you're an electric guitar guy, and then they have basses out there as well. And while not on their official website right now, they're also doing a Telecaster series later in the year. And you get two color options. This one here is the Sherwood Green Metallic. Metallic meaning, you know, it's got a little bit of a shine. It'll look different in different lighting angles, a little bit darker, a little bit brighter, but not sparkly in your face. But I'm seeing some kind of interesting specs here, like a overly exaggerated arm carve right here. I mean, that really catches your attention when the finish reflects the light in different ways. And it's an HH setup, but get this. You have a coil split option on here, so it can also be kind of like an SS style, which is, I don't think I've ever seen a Stratocaster just have a single coil in the neck and the bridge and not one in the middle. So I'm guessing this is what, three-way switch? Yep. So that's pretty standard. We get those uh, vintage style fender knobs. Take a look at those. So it's got that rubbered skirt to it. They're rather tall. I mean, there were a bunch of freaky fenders in the 80s. And oh my, are these active pickups? It looks like we have a battery compartment in here. I wasn't expecting that. And just kind of a, a plain satin finish. So first impressions, I'd say it's pretty cool. It's not like a pencil thin neck. It's still rounded, but not like what I normally think like Steve I shreddery type of guy. So I will say the frets feel nice and they appear to be a little bit larger than normal. So we'll do the uh, full spec rundown on the bench, but the base comes in two different colors, the Sherwood green metallic and a Torino red. But I decided for the strats today, since I can't use that one, despite being my favorite color of this series for the green screening, I would uh, go ahead and grab the other one for this one so we can see them side by side. Cause sometimes you might like something based off of the stock footage be like, yep, that's what I want. I want that one. But then when you see them in person, it's like, oh no, maybe I do like that spec a little bit better in color on this one. So this is an Inca Silver. This screams a little bit more 80s to me personally, because you know, you get the really striking finish. It's all, whoa. Okay, so if you like big sparkles, they kind of come out a little bit more in the silver one. I mean, they're about the same, but something about this finish really brings it to life. Man, I, th I think this is one of those times now that I've seen both in person. This is cool, right? It's my favorite colors, black and green. But this bad boy really screams 80s to me. So we will do the playing demo on this particular one and we'll tear apart the green one to take an individual look at the parts and specs and uh, see what makes the Boxer series tick here.
Inside the boxer strat. Man, do I feel silly thinking these were like active pickups, but at the same time, I'm really glad they're not. I was like, what did I get myself into? Notice, there's no output jack on the front of this guitar. It's on the side, so we'll see that on the back later. But now it all makes sense and why this looks different from a regular Strat. Okay, so double humbucker setup here looks like this underneath our pick guard. So if you want to modify it to be an SSS Strat, you can. You can have HSS, you can have HSH. But stock from the factory, they're just HH. So if you're upset that, ah, oh, they reissued this version, I mean, you can technically modify it to whatever version you want, except for pit guardless, because you got all these routes. But speaking of our routes, they're looking nice and clean to me. They've been shielded off. You got your grounding tabs in there. And as far as the pickups themselves, here's what they look like. No markings on the back. That's really strange for Fender. Normally you find stickers everywhere. If you were to take this thing out, you would never know it is a boxer series humbucker. That's just what they call them. But you're gonna notice the tone pot is a little bit different looking than your volume here. So this actually has one of those TBX pots on it. it stands for treble bass expander. So essentially, there's a little notch you can just feel as you're moving it at the five. That is like your bass position. And then you can boost your frequencies and you can cut them. I really don't know what I'm doing too much with the TVXs, but some people really love that feature. So that is there if you are interested in it. And you get the coil split option, as I was talking about earlier. So humbucker sounds and single coil sounds for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six different positions. The only downside to this being a flip of the switch is you can't have like single coil neck humbucker bridge within your middle position. It's either all the way on or all the way off. Here's a nice close-up look of our F stamp knob. I think these things look really cool. As far as the bridge itself, I like it. It's the two-point synchronized tremolo system. And you know, being black, I think that's why I really like this guitar's aesthetic vibe, because it's all black hardware everywhere. It just kind of all blends in, looks good with the green finish. I mean, even your fretboard, they could have went with ebony to make it really black, but it's a nice dark color. And as far as the bar on these, it just looks like this. It comes in your gig bag, you stick it in there, and then you can lock it into place with a little Allen key right there. That is so strange, plugging a strat in on the butt end like that. Okay, so our pickup readings here, whoa, 15.29k ohms. This is gonna be a hot monster. But then that's only 671? What's going on here? 3.51869 when they're split. Okay, that is kind of interesting. That is going to be a screaming bridge pickup, but it's nice to know that this will be, in theory, technically a little bit more mellow. Readings only get you so far. So yeah, it's kind of a super strat guitar. We'll get real close up here on the finish. This one is not quite as sparkly, so if you're looking for something that's not completely in your face, you're gonna like this. It's just a very light metallic sheen to it. But the body itself is made out of basswood. How many pieces? I don't know. I couldn't see any seam lines anywhere. But when we move on to here, we get a maple neck with a true rosewood fretboard. It's not pow ferro or anything. And as I was alluding to earlier, these are jumbo frets on a 25 and a half inch scale length. I mean, this is definitely a more modern player strat because normally these things have like those skinny vintage tall frets. I mean, you can just tell looking at this how massive those frets are. And I do want to commend Fender Japan. Look at the, how shiny these frets are and look how clean that fretboard is. I did not do any conditioning. I, did, I just took the strings off. I didn't do anything. This just looks fantastic out of the box. I'll give that to him. Okay, I lied. I did lubricate the nut, but that's about it. But the spec sheet calls this a bone nut. And I get a 1.64 inch nut width. Then by the 12th, 2.02. .02. With a first fret neck depth of 0.85 and 0.95 by the 12th. They call this a medium C neck profile shape. And I 100% agree with that. I was kind of expecting, you know, super slim shredder, but not quite. Still comfortable for that, I would imagine, but also good for other people that don't like the pencil necks. What kind of shocked me on the headstock is the way that they routed the truss rod. I'm sure that has something to do with the originals, but that just looks like a, a, a cheap guitar that does it like that. Normally fenders are a little bit more classy looking, but you can adjust that in there with your Allen key if you'd like. And we get stock Godo tuners. 
Now, one thing that I think the silver one has over the green is you remember how the strats have the matching color headstock logos? This one has silver on both of them, so it's technically a matching color outline for the Inca silver, but not for the green one. But we've got just a single string tree, no locking nut or anything. That's what this thing looks like it's missing. Normally things like that have like those posts, but another modern spec for these guys is instead of like the vintage style seven and a quarter inch radius, you've got a pretty flat 12 inches. So. Moving on to the backside, here's what we got underneath all the covers. The block in this is kind of interesting. So it's a rather thick block, but you can see as it comes up here, it tapers off to be skinnier. A magnet does not stick to it. And then here's how they put the output jack in there. So that's the only way to get away with that on a Stratocaster because there's no routes back here. I'd say that's actually one of the more unique features about the Strat. Just like the top, how it had a little bit more of a comfort carve to it, I think this is slightly more exaggerated on this model as well. But our neck plate just reads Fender, made in Japan, and has our serial number right there. Inside here is the micro tilt adjustment if you wish to use it. And this is a gloss poly finish, and this is a satin poly finish. This guitar actually feels pretty good in my hands. Nice and silky smooth. Maybe they could have rolled the edge of the fretboard a little bit more, but that's just my own personal playing preference. And we just have that regular maple neck here. Lots of nice wood grain on this example. So overall, did I see anything bad with QC? Honestly, no. It just is a very nicely crafted, made in Japan, kind of super strat here. Fully assembled, this weighs eight pounds, one ounce. But the silver one's a little bit lighter at seven pounds, 11.4 ounces. So let's go ahead and plug this in and run through the tones. <laughs> Okay, so here's our clean tones, starting with our neck pickup. And then you can also split that. Try out our bridge pickup. I've got to say, I kind of like the single coil tones better out of this thing so far. Try that combination. So that's some tones there. I hope that gives you an idea. That is all with this at five. So it's like the TBX not necessarily doing anything. Now remember, in any of those positions, you can boost it or kind of cut it and just use it like a regular tone knob. So let's kind of dive into that a little bit, starting with our neck pickup here. Hear how it gets nice and bright? It's 
Remember, that's still the neck pickup too. It almost kind of sounds like a bridge. And then from there, kind of like a regular tone pot. That can kind of help brighten up the humbucker tone. Now let's switch over to what this thing's meant for. Some distorted playing. Now that we know all about the new Boxer series, what are my final thoughts on these things? They're not the guitar for me, but I could see who this does appeal to. The guy that likes to do the 80s hair metal stuff. I'm sure if I had some more chops for that stuff, this would be great because the frets are nice and tall. It's really easy to do bends. It's actually pretty easy to do the tapping stuff as well. But being a more traditional guy, I find this pot right here just to be in the way. I mean, if you like to pick down here, you're not gonna like this guitar, but it's here for a reason. It's for the volume swells. And I do wanna commend Fender on that. It's like so easy to spin this knob. You can get from zero to 10 real quick. So when you're doing the volume swells, real easy to do. It's almost like a pure frictionless pot. I thought it was pretty versatile as far as the tones go. Very deep sounding humbuckers in here, but it definitely gets super hot in the bridge, especially when you have that TBX, you know, <laughs> cranked all the way to the max. So if your distortion pedal's not cutting it, you know, you can, you can get a little bit more out of it like that. And I really do enjoy the fact that this is a side output jack Stratocaster. You don't see that too often here. But as far as the negatives, it mainly just comes down to, I don't think these are, you know, special enough for the price tag. I mean, 1200 bucks, yes, it's made in Japan, it's looking cool, but you could easily build one of these as a parts caster. There's really not something super unique unless you're nostalgic for the original Boxer series. And maybe that's why people really aren't talking about these things, because they're kind of missing that one ultra special feature that only these guys can have. I mean, the only thing I can think of is pretty much the special knobs. I could not keep these things in tune very well. I was always having to tweak it, but that could just be my fault. I'm not the best at setting up trim systems. And these are, you know, factory fresh out of the box. So ultimately, if you like the style of guitar, you're used to the trem setups, you like the super strat tones, I think you will enjoy it. I did not notice anything bad about the craftsmanship or quality of the instrument itself, but for this reviewer, it, it's not my favorite guitar in the world. But which one did I end up preferring? Despite the initial shock and love of the silver finish here, I think ultimately I would go green on this one because it's got more symmetry of colors going on here. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out the new Boxer series from Fender, and hopefully this video helps you make an informed decision if one of these is right for you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.